NASA claims that during the Nixon administration, between the years 1969 and 1972, 12 astronauts walked on the surface of the moon and returned safely to Earth. This event was even commemorated on two United States coins, the Susan B. Anthony dollar, which was minted from 1979 to 1981, and then again in 1999, and the Eisenhower dollar, which was minted from 1971 to 1978. The reverse sides of both of these coins were based on the Apollo 11 insignia and show an eagle landing on the moon with the Earth in the background. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. The belief that men actually walked on the moon is shared by the vast majority of the world's population. There are no high-profile scientists, astronauts, or officials that have openly expressed any doubt as to the reality of this alleged accomplishment. The only exception to this is former United States President William Jefferson Clinton. In his autobiography, My Life, published in 2004, he states on page 156, Just a month before, Apollo 11 astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong had left their colleague Michael Collins aboard Spaceship Columbia and walked on the moon, beating by five months President Kennedy's goal of putting a man on the moon before the decade was out. The old carpenter asked me if I really believed it had happened. I said, sure, I saw it on television. He disagreed. He said that he didn't believe it for a minute, that them television fellers could make things look real that weren't. Back then, I thought he was a crank. During my eight years in Washington, I saw some things on TV that made me wonder if he wasn't ahead of his time. To simplify, what Clinton says is that a gentleman expressed doubt in the Apollo claims, and he wonders whether that gentleman was correct. Now, exactly what is a former two-term United States president doing, wondering about the authenticity of the greatest technological achievement in the history of mankind? an event that had marked the legacy of his own boyhood hero, JFK. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Obviously, he has some reason to believe that the moon landings were not authentic. If a former U.S. president is wondering about the authenticity of the claim, does it not make sense that you should wonder too? One can imagine why a former president would not want to come right out and blow the whistle by unequivocally stating his true beliefs. But he did, probably for the sake of his legacy, want to have it recorded that he did subtly flag the issue for those paying attention. And he flagged it by using the old carpenter acquaintance to get his point across. Regardless of precisely how much time Mr. Clinton actually spends wondering about this, a closer examination of the claim reveals that to have performed such a feat in 1969 completely contradicts the evidence and otherwise offends common sense. Four days. Four Engine arm is at Okay, I'm going to get the pro. 99. Proceeded. 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Run right away, Houston. That's your good. Ag thought. The last alleged mission to the moon was Apollo 17, which NASA says took place in December of 1972. Since then, absolutely no country claims to have sent astronauts or even animals more than 400 miles above the surface of the Earth. In recent years, space shuttle astronauts completed the trip, wherein they attained a maximum altitude of 365 miles. Normally, the space shuttle orbits at an altitude of approximately 200 miles from the Earth, the same orbit altitude of the International Space Station. Now, you might be asking, why exactly is this maximum distance from Earth relevant to our discussion? Well, let's put it this way. The Moon is 240,000 miles away from the Earth. The diameter of the Earth is 8,000 miles. 
This puts the moon at about 30 Earth diameters away. In relation to the space shuttle's orbit on this scale, it has never traveled more than one half of one inch away from the Earth's surface. Six, five, three main engines up and burning. Two, one. And lift off. Just getting into orbit is no small feat, as is illustrated by the fact that in all of recorded history, only three countries, the United States, China, and Russia, have been able to put a human just into orbit and never being more than 400 miles from Earth. The explanation for this has always been that, except for these three countries, every other country in the world has been too cheap and lazy to venture into just Earth orbit. In reality, the reason has to do with the difficulty in accomplishing this. This most of all drives home the point that NASA's claim of sending men on a 240,000 mile trip in 1969, some 600 times further than they can send men today, is just not plausible. One reason the space shuttle has not been sent beyond 400 miles into space has to do with the Earth's magnetism. The core of the Earth is molten iron. As it slowly swirls around, it generates a powerful magnetic field surrounding the Earth. These fields cause the formation of two radiation belts around the Earth, called the Van Allen radiation belts. They are made of charged particles and are named after James Van Allen, who was in charge of the Geyer counters installed on the Explorer 1 satellite, which discovered the belts in 1958. These belts are formed by trapped charged particles. The magnetic field traps these particles that originate from the sun. They then spiral around the lines of the Earth's magnetic field, going back and forth between magnetic poles. As pointed out by Ralph Rene, author of NASA Mooned America, Dr. James Van Allen published an article in the March 1959 issue of Scientific American that described the danger in traveling through these belts. In this article, entitled, Radiation Belts Around the Earth, on page 47 of this issue, Van Allen states, Our measurements show that the maximum radiation level as of 1958 is equivalent to between 10 and 100 rent gens per hour, depending on the still undetermined proportion of protons to electrons. Since a human being exposed for two days to even 10 rent gens would have only an even chance of survival, the radiation belts obviously present an obstacle to spaceflight. If anyone ever really does go through these belts, it will become apparent just how lethal they really are to humans. Other than the alleged Apollo trips, all other manned spacecraft have stayed below the belts. These belts do not officially begin until an altitude of 1,000 miles is reached. But when one space shuttle crew was brave enough to go nearly 400 miles above the Earth, they started to experience some unusual effects. They reported seeing shooting stars, which were a result of the radiation hitting the retinas of their eyes. And if I'd have landed 20 feet behind where I landed, we'd have landed right back in that crater. When interviewed, Alan Bean of Apollo 12 initially stated that he had not gone through the belts and did not observe any effects caused by them. Any ill effects from the Van Allen radiation belts? No. Now, I'm not sure we went far enough out to, to encounter the Van Allen radiation belt. Maybe we did. When it was pointed out that the flight pattern took him through the belts, he changed his story. The belts are 1,000 miles to... 25,000 